do that so that you can be in gear and be tapped in to what the Lord is doing amongst us this very moment. You saw John just came up to welcome people, so I just want to welcome every one of us into God's presence tonight. However, I had a very strong leading in my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Rice. Appreciate that. A strong leading in my heart to, at this very moment to do something. Wow, Christian, thank you so much. That was right on time. Menkush Engedea, Sum Kunkienda. I want to first of all remind us that God is more eager to bless us than we are to receive the blessing. Because a lot of the blessings that we desire are the things that we want. They might not even be the things that we need. And so just think about it for a moment. And you know me, I've given this analogy again and again that your car does not need gas because your car is not going anywhere. The car that you drive does not have an appointment with another car somewhere that it needs to get to. You don't wake up one day and your car has left you a note. Since you have decided to sleep in, I've got things to do. I have taken off and left. Which is interesting because that is how many of us are. We are always in a hurry and we're always getting ahead of God. You go ahead and do your own things without even waiting to see what God wants to get done. So your car does not get up and say, oh, I need gas because I want to go see Mr. Ford. So who needs gas? You need gas because you are the one who is using the car. It is with that mentality that we need to approach the things of God, the things of our assignment, the things of our calling. I didn't make myself, I didn't know that there was even an earth to come to. I had no consciousness, I had no existence outside of God. No, 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 leave the lights on. We needed it for earlier, but now it's just okay the way it is. Yeah, so leave it back on, all of it, so that people can read their Bibles. Thank you. So, at the end of the day, we are here because God wants us to be here. He needs us here. Because knowing that helps us to recognize that we cannot be more interested in our own success and in our own joy than God is. My car doesn't want to run better than I want it to run. You know sometimes your car keeps going but there is a noise that you hear and you're just uncomfortable but the car doesn't stop it keeps going so basically the car is telling you I don't mind I don't care I can keep going but you the owner of the car you're like nope I need my car to run even better than that so if we don't see God from that perspective we will always prioritize the things that we want over the things that we need it is imperative for us to be able to know that when we come into the presence of God, everything that we need is right there. Okay? So remember the first thing I said was, God wants you to be more equipped than you even know you need equipping for. The degree of equipping that God intends for you is so that you will be thoroughly furnished unto every good work, not lacking anything. So I come here today because as I was there in worship and my wife was praying, good to see you guys, the white heads, everybody, good to see you, God bless you. You see, I was there, my wife was praying and the Lord said to me, he said, I asked you to study my encounter with Abraham because I want to do something about it in here today. God had an encounter with Abraham wherein the Bible says, and the Lord God appeared unto Abraham. Not, not many of us in this room can say that the Lord God has appeared to us. We may have seen angels. We may have seen others in our dreams, other messengers. We may have had somebody come give us a prophetic word. We may have encountered somebody that is truly godly and gifted with the unction of the Holy Spirit. But how many of us can say, 
at least not all of the seasons of our lives can we say that the Lord God appeared to us this was not an angel this particular time God did not even send an angel he appeared himself and he said to Abraham he says I'm changing your name I'm changing your wife's name because of what I'm fixing what I'm about to do and they had a conversation a conversation that was so detailed to the point wherein Abraham was even asking about his son Ishmael he was talking to God about all of what was going on in his house the details of the covenant how there will be a sign of the covenant which was circumcision all of that was being discussed so you know that Abraham was not hallucinating he wasn't making it up and he wasn't talking to somebody without authority he was talking to God how do you know because everything that God said to him was eternal he said to him I'm gonna bless your children forever from generation to generation I'm gonna give them blessings and he even said Ishmael I know you're worried about Ishmael he said even that Ishmael is not the one that will carry this promise he says, but I will bless him also. Twelve princes will come out of him. And now we see those twelve princes ruling and reigning in the land of Arabia. The twelve princes, as God commanded, fulfilled. Just like the twelve sons of Jacob, they also have their own region of the world that they have inherited by God's promise. But do you know that even though God made it very apparent that it was him that was speaking, Abraham still laughed at what God was saying. When God said, oh, well, 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 I know men don't like to hear that. Myself and Antoine were talking about this earlier today. I think Brother Matthew was there too. That quite often, because as they say, we live in a man's world, men only want to talk about when Sarah laughed at what God was saying. When Sarah was in the other room and she overheard the messengers of God, which was God the Father, the Son, and Spirit manifest in the, in the, in the form of cloaked angels, when they came into the tent of Abraham and they were being fed milk and other things, they said to Abraham, by this time next year, your daughter, your wife will be found with child. And, and Sarah laughed. How many people know that story? But do you know that Abraham laughed too when God first told him? The reason why he didn't laugh that other time was because he had heard it before. But the first time he heard it, he laughed and he was like, ha, 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 God, you got jokes. He says, God, you're pulling my legs because how is that even possible? I'm almost 100 years old. Sarah is cl running close behind me. These things can't even happen. You can bless my generation, bless Ishmael. He presented Ishmael because he didn't think God could give him a son through Sarah. He laughed even though God was standing in front of him. And the Lord took me through that journey in the last couple of days, just getting me thinking about it and meditating on it and now he said to me he said the reason why i took you that route is because there are people in here today who are struggling to hold on to the promises of god there are some of us we have tried as much as we can by our own willpower to believe what god has said if abraham who saw god who heard the details of what was going on in his household and what will happen for generations to come, who was standing with the God of the world, of the universe. He was standing with the Almighty. If he struggled to believe, then maybe you're not doing badly after all with the little doubt that you have because you haven't even seen what that dude had seen. You hadn't heard the audible voice of God. You did not have the experiences that he had in the house of Noah while he was being raised by shame. This guy saw people that survived the flood. Because we forget often that Noah was still alive when Abraham was born. This was somebody who had had an experience with the supernatural and of the supernatural. And yet when the God of the universe was speaking, he was like, God, okay now, <laughs> can we get serious here? And so if you have been struggling, the Lord is saying that there is help for you today. God wants to touch hearts in here today. Let me tell you something. It is not by power. It is not by might, but by my spirit. Do you know the Bible even says that it is not of him that wills, neither is it of him that runs, but it is of God that shows mercy. 
the ability that you have to be able to hold on to the promises of God is actually not a human ability because if it was human, it will fail. Because the Bible says that the arm of flesh shall fail. Do you know that faith is supernatural? Because none of us can manufacture faith. How do I know that? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing itself comes by the word of God. So if God doesn't speak and if the word of God doesn't find its way into your subconscious, how can you then hear it from inside what is being said? Because literally that is what faith is. Faith is when you have received the word of God and it's gone through your senses and through your consciousness to find its place in your subconscious and then it begins to speak from there. That is faith. If the word of God is not speaking from inside your subconscious mind, nothing happens. Because the forces that govern life, they're not in your conscious thoughts. Your conscious mind cannot handle the forces that govern life. The forces that govern life, the energies and the forces and the power that makes things happen can only be induced from the realm of the spirit. And the part of you that is closest to that realm is your subconscious mind. That is the reason why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It has to be the word of God that has already taken root within you. Have you not experienced this before? wherein scripture that you've known for a long time that you've confessed and professed doesn't work for you until one day you just hear that scripture again as though someone is shouting it from within you and that moment you're like okay the bible says by his stripes i am healed i am shaking of the beast into the fire and then everything starts to change the same word but this time around it is being spoken with the voice of and that faith, the Bible says, because it's beyond your reach, has to be a gift from God. And that is why God has already done his part. The Bible says he has, in fact, given to every one of us a measure of faith. When the disciples heard what Jesus was saying about their future, they were like, well, if that is what is ahead of us, we're hopeless. Unless you increase our faith. They didn't say stay with us much longer, even though they wished that he would stay with them much longer. But their desire was what? Increase our faith. So the Lord wants to increase faiths in the house tonight. The Lord wants to show you how to lay hold of his word. The Lord wants to do a transformative work in the house tonight, which is what you need to be able to begin to access the things that he has in your name in heavenly places. It takes faith to manifest the invisible right here in the material world. So I want to pray for a couple of people real quick before we go on. If you're saying, can you please help me with my Bible? We're just going to read Romans chapter 12 verse 5 real quick. If you're saying, Brother Moses, I am one of those people. Thank you, honey. I am one of those people that God has come for tonight because I have been struggling I try not to waver at the promises of God, but at times it's almost as if my hands are too slippery because of all the disappointments of the past, because I don't even know whether I am doing too much or whether I am doing too little. I am one of those people tonight who needs help in laying hold on the promises of God. Do you know that God did not leave Abraham to remain in unbelief? He was like, okay, I'm here. I'm standing in front of you and you're still doubting. God encouraged him. You see, quite often we give a lot of credit to people and we forget God that makes it happen. The Bible says, faithful is he who has called you, who will also do it. God is the one that does it. And he wants you to give him all the glory. You look at the apostles. They went everywhere. Miracles were breaking forth. But did you forget the prayer that they prayed before the miracles started to manifest? Peter in Acts chapter 4, he says, he says, God, don't keep looking at us like this. We need help. Look upon their threats and the shame that is about to follow and stretch forth your hand to heal and we will be your witnesses. They're like, we're not about to go heal anybody because we can't, but we know you can. So stretch forth your hand and heal and we will be there to say, yeah, that's the Lord. You see, when I laid hands on you and that infirmity disappeared, 
that was the Lord. I'm just here to witness so you know it's not an accident or a coincidence. It is God that does it. Romans chapter 12 verse 5, what does it say here? It says, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Having gifts, having then gifts different, according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them if prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. You need faith like you need the mercy of God. Because without faith, you can't even prophesy. The Bible says that heaven only regards your prophecy that is done according to the faith that you have. Anybody can come out and say, well, tomorrow by this time there will be rain. Well, you can say whatever you want. It's one of your rights as being a citizen of the United States, the freedom of speech. You can literally say whatever you want. But the Bible says to, to Jeremiah, he says, look at those people. I'm about to expose them because they claim to be prophets. He said, but they're about to say things that will not come to pass. And then all men shall know that I have not put my words in their mouth. So for you to have things said and to see results, you have to do it by what? By faith. And the Lord is saying, today I want to help your faith. You know, God can help your faith. Remember the man who came to Jesus, whose child had been troubled. And Jesus looked at him and Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And he says, you know what? I actually believe that you can. He said, but there is still a part of me that doesn't believe. He says, I believe, but help my unbelief. Even Abraham that was called the father of faith, he did not, became, he did not become the father of faith until his unbelief was helped. Do you know that if somebody had told Abraham before God came that God is coming and he would tell you things that he would do for you? Do you believe? Abraham might have said, oh, absolutely. Whatever God says, I believe. But himself was exposed for having unbelief because of the chuckle. When God said it, he laughed. And many of us don't realize that it is an opportunity it is actually a great privilege to find ourselves in situations wherein unbelief is coming out of us. You see, when God tells you to go to a far country to go and minister, but then there is a little bit of hesitation and you're like, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I need another confirmation. I need someone to speak. It is an opportunity for you to say, ah, there you go. I believe what God has said, but this hesitation is unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. The Lord is asking you to go and help a family that is in trouble. And then you look at the money that is in your hand that God is asking you to bless them with. And a part of you is allowing your fingers to become super glue that is sticking to your pocket. And the hand doesn't want to come out. You're like, Lord, I know that I need to do good because your word says it. But for some reason, I'm a little hesitant. When you see such hesitation, it is unbelief. Present it to God and say, God, you are in the business of helping unbeliefs. Help my unbelief. God wants to help our unbelief today because we're coming into a season of prophecy. And I'm going to explain that to you in detail shortly. But before we get into the explanation, now I believe by God, the reason why it is in this order is because what I want to share with you by God with regards to prophecy in the season that we're in needs to begin now. For those of you that were not here a couple of weeks ago, but precisely on the 3rd of September, I was standing here when the angel of the Lord appeared, standing somewhere between those two cameras. And he showed me a banner. It was like a placard, white with red inscription. And it says, the time is now. And then he put the scripture, Jeremiah 22, 22. And by the time we read the Jeremiah 22, 22, in that service, we immediately knew what the angel of the Lord was saying talking about the leaders that will start to drop because the wind of the Lord is blowing their way to make room for the new generation of leaders in the world to rise. When the angel of the Lord stood there, he said, this is now, this is a now word. These things that I am telling you, they have, they have to be acted upon now. So for you to prophesy in this service, you must make sure that you have faith. And to be sure that you have faith is to receive 
the help that God is offering today. The Lord is saying, I am bringing you help because I need you to have faith before you prophesy because each of you must prophesy according to the measure of faith. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. If you've noticed, we've been reading Jeremiah quite a bit lately. We went through Isaiah for a little bit. We went through Ezekiel. And now we're in Jeremiah. It's been a couple of weeks now, almost every service. We read from Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 17, we're going to quickly go to verse 29. Jeremiah 17, not 29, verse 19. What does it say? It says, Thus says the Lord to me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people. Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people by which the kings of Judah come in and by which they go out and in all the gates of Jerusalem this is Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 19 it says go and stand I want to give you an insight into 2023 you know, for us here at Communion House, we typically press into the new year in September. Because as much as we do not worship the nation of Israel, and we do not idolize the people therein, we obey what the Lord said. The Lord said to Abraham, he says, I'm going to raise children to you that will be like the stars in the heavens, and they will be a sign unto the world. Because when God made the stars in the day that he created them, the Bible says he put stars in the firmament of the heavens. He made the sun and the moon and it says that they will be for signs and they will be for seasons. So the nation of Israel itself is a sign unto the rest of the world. God made them a sign to the rest of the world. And that is the reason why Paul says, if by their rejection you Gentiles have come to find salvation, he says, what else do you think you would find when their acceptance season comes? You see, because these people, while they were being rejected, they pointed to the Lord Jesus. Now imagine what's going to happen when they have been embraced. There will be an unfolding of great glory. So we follow what goes on in that part of the world, not just presently, but historically. And we know that they operate a different calendar. Personally, I couldn't care less. For years, I knew about it, but I paid no attention to it until the year 2021. And the Lord said to me, 2020, as we were getting into 2021, the Lord said to me, because somebody asked me, she was like, Pastor, what is God saying about the year 2021? And my initial response was that, wait a minute, we just... We are just entering into October. And as soon as he asked me, and I was about to speak of my flesh, the Holy Spirit arrested my tongue, and he said, declare to her the things that I've shown you. It wasn't until she had left that I realized that, wait a minute, where did all that come from? And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, because I have prepared you for this time as you are crossing over into the next season. So apparently, the Lord who set the calendar is operating by that calendar. It's just that sometimes we leave the word in the refrigerator for three months. We wait until the word tells us it's a new year before we go bring it out. And by that time, the children of the world who know exactly what they're doing have already taken a lot of the good things and you're coming in and that is the reason why you struggle the rest of the year because you came late to the game. And so here is the deal. We know that we have come to that cusp of the new year. And the Lord already said to me, for us here, the new year is going to have a theme or is themed go forth. But the Lord did not stop there, praise the Lord. He says to me, he says, go forth, but also await my instruction at every gate. We will go forth, but at every gate, there is an instruction. The reason why the Lord said to us two Saturdays ago that this last Tuesday, I will not be speaking alone, that my friends will come and speak alongside with me. The seven angels that came in here on Tuesday as angels assigned to the church. I didn't tell you the reason why. Nobody asked me. But I will tell you now because the Lord's given me the go ahead to tell you the reason why that happened. You know, we were wrapping up service. We, were, we had done the offering 
done the announcements, were about to leave when the Lord said to me, tell them not to miss Tuesday. Because on Tuesday, they may hear only your voice through the microphone, but seven angels, the angels of the church, will be here to speak to their hearts as well. And so I asked the Lord afterwards, I said, Father, what was that about? And he said to me, he said, has there been any exodus without the ministry of my angels? He says, whenever there's an exodus, I don't necessarily have to come down. He says, I lead my people through the hand of my angels. Look at the children of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, what did the Lord say to Moses? The Lord said to Moses, he says, look ahead of you. My angel has gone ahead of you. He says, and he will lead you, only do not grieve him because he did not forgive. That was an introduction to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because any blasphemy against the Father is forgiven, against the Son, but against the Holy Spirit is not forgiven. And you've heard me teach extensively on the subject of the angel that leads. When Paul and Silas were in jail and they were broken out of jail, who led them out of jail? The angel of the Lord. When Peter was in prison, who took him out of prison? The angel of the Lord. Whenever we're coming from captivity into plenty, into the land that God has promised to us where we have the more than abundant life, he leads us by the ministry of his angels. So that was what the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me that I did that because I need to awaken the hearts of your brothers and sisters to the ministry of angels. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits to those of us who are heirs of salvation together with Christ Jesus. Many of us, we have tripped and we continue to trip by making the wrong decisions, by going to the wrong places and we keep blaming God. We keep saying, but you said you would lead me, that the steps of a good man are ordered by you. But the Lord is also reminding you how he leads you. The Bible says he has given his angels charge over you so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. But because of a time that came centuries past when people abandoned the worship of God to start worshiping the angels that broke their ranks, we have been so terrified about the ministry of angels. But the Lord is saying, every single one of those prophets, how did I speak to them? Through the ministry of my angels. The revelations that you have, whether from Daniel, from Ezekiel, to Elijah, even unto John the Beloved, were revelations that came through the ministry of angels. Some of you here, you've listened to me explain exactly what happened to me the day the Lord took me and he showed me how angels the order of messaging how angels receive messages how they check out the scroll from the libraries of heaven and how they have to go to a particular location because of signatures that God has built into existence God takes seriously the ministry of his angels and you should too because in the season that we're in, we are not to war alone. We are not to fight alone. We are not to go forth alone. We are to go with the angels that the Lord has assigned to us. So that was the reason why the Lord did what he did. And look at how merciful the Lord was to us. Not only did we receive a visitation, God gave us a clear insight into what the visitation was about. We heard from the angels of the Lord in our hearts and then I was able to echo to us from three of the angels clearly what they said, two of them, what their names were, what their assignment is. And we cannot take this privilege for granted. If you remember on the 3rd of September, what did I say to you? I said the angel of the Lord that was standing before me, he said to me, now is the time for the fulfillment of Jeremiah 22, 22, when the Lord says, I am sending my wind to remove your rulers. And the angel of the Lord said to me, he says in particular, the ones that have held the people captive. But before he left, he asked me to ask you, what will you do now with this liberty that you have received? When the oppressors are gone, when you are gone from the land of oppression, what are you going to do? And that is what now we need to answer. What is the next step for us guys? Because the Bible says to whom much is given, much is expected. So much revelation has been given. It needs to be followed by application because we're not supposed to just sit down and be loaded with insight without making, without making any action or taking any action, or making any moves. I have set the foundation here of three things, and we're gonna pray about two of them, and we're gonna act on one of them. The first thing we're gonna pray about is what the Lord said he wants to do, first of all, which is to rouse faith in us. 
because he wants you to speak but you can only speak by faith so how is the Lord stirring up faith in us today first of all we will pray so if you're saying brother Moses I hear you even Abraham needed help I need help to believe as I should oh father thank you you see the Lord just showed me something I see a battlefield and it's a very modern modern battlefield I see the tanks I see an explosion and the Lord said that explosion that I'm seeing will be followed by a reaction from this land but some of those actions don't have to be taken if the church would pray somebody is trying to incite war trying to stir us to go to war that explosion is exactly what was shown to me that eruption is going to happen it will call for some reaction and what I'm talking to you about is within is very soon it's a matter of weeks from where we stand today. We will see that same picture in the news. Maybe not all of us, but some will see it. And the Lord is saying the retaliation or the reaction will include some agitation that can be shut down if my people will shut it down. The Lord says he cannot delay, but neither can he deny the redemption. But one thing that it can do is it can bring a lot of irritation. A lot of annoyances. And at this particular point in time, to be honest, we can do without, so, without silly annoyances by people making emotional and devilish choices. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray for two people. I'm not going to mention their name, but I'm going to tell you something about them. There are two people in government right now that need to leave. Their time is up. Let us rise up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You see, I love it because when God does battle that involves people, he doesn't use too many people. Why would God, the one who is the God of the army of angels that are innumerable, use too many people? I told you last week, no, not even last week, Tuesday, when the army of Syria came against Elisha, Elisha was by himself and Gehazi. Gehazi was like half a man. And guess what? They thought, at least Gehazi thought, that they were being outnumbered. And Elisha says, no, we're not. And he touched his eyes. He was like, no, be, see. And then he saw an innumerable company of angels that were more than the army of Syria. That battle included only two human beings and innumerable angels. Gideon's army, 300 human beings, innumerable angels. David, one human being, innumerable angels. The way God does it is he doesn't need too many of us. It's a privilege for us to be invited to where the master himself is doing battle. So don't be dismayed by the number of us that the Lord has given this intel to. And then again, you have just read in Romans chapter 12, verse that we just read verse 5 we are not alone we're part of this body called the body of Christ who knows what other part of the world where God is raising himself another little group of people to bring down this opposition that the enemy is staging so very quickly this is what the Lord wants us to pray about and I don't want you to apply any sentiment because we have different political affiliations so don't pray against the people that you want to see fall okay let us just pray that the will of God be done let me do you a favor one of them is a man the other one is a woman and they are they are resisting the wind the Lord showed to me the woman is holding on to a rope because the wind is blowing but she does not want to go and the man they actually tied the rope to his waist and tied him to an object like a railing because he cannot even tie his own rope anymore Let me tell you something. 
if they remain longer than they should, they will be the agents of annoyances in the lives of believers. What does the word of God say? The word of God says the wind has come forth to remove the rulers. But some of these rulers are not letting go. They are holding on. One is holding on and one is being tied on. But the Lord is saying, it is time for them to go, but you have to say it. Brother Greg, can you please come? Help me give him a microphone. In fact, you can use this one. What I want you to do, Brother Greg, is I want you to stand in here and face that direction. You see that lamp over there? Face that lamp and just say the word go as angrily as you can. Okay, are you ready? Just the word go. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Go! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Rosemary, I want you to come as angrily as you can. You see? Yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at the smile. Is that how to be angry? I like this kind of anger, you know. A laughing one. <laughs> I want you to now say, go quickly. Are you ready? Go quickly. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And all of us, we're going to say something and we're going to say, go now. Are we ready at the count of three? Three, two, one. Go, go now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be seated. Be seated. Now, let me tell you what the Lord is, is letting me know. Let me just remind you, Communion House, this particular generation of believers, this house, we are a very privileged generation. And we are a privileged bunch because the apostles, where they are now, wish they could see our day. I told you people, I gave you all a heads up that 2020, we we're only going to be meeting as a church for a few short months. I said that in January before they shut it down and we're going to be in homes. And once we get into homes, that we need to focus on the ministry of the word, particularly having scriptures memorized so that they can be there for us to meditate on until they're fully settled within our spirit. You remember? And then when we got into those homes, the Lord, as soon as we got into homes, having meetings, the Lord said to me, tell your brothers and sisters what I just showed you. And I told them, I said, the Lord has shown me that the heavens have opened above us. And since then, you can attest to the abundance of revelation. The, things, the Bible says God will not do a thing without first revealing it to his servants, the prophet. And so we are not supposed to be listening to the news to know what's happening. If it's in the news, it's already happened. It's already too late. You are supposed to know before it happens. So this explosion will stir up the devil in certain people to create annoyances. But I don't want you to discount it because it cannot stop what God will do. Remember the story of Jesus. In fact, the Holy Spirit said to me to tell you that it's going to happen just like that. Jesus, he knew that Judas was going to betray him. Even when he was praying to the Father for the disciples, he says, I pray for these ones. I do not pray for the world. The world is going to hell in a hand basket. Can't be bothered. He said, but I pray for these ones that you have given to me. Let me explain because if you haven't heard me teach on that subject, you might be thinking that I'm saying, well, people can just go to hell that I don't care. No, Jesus was talking about the world system. He says, I do not pray for the world. He said, but I pray for these ones. The people that are within the world system have been given to the Lord Jesus. The system itself would perish. Okay, the system itself will what will perish. That was what Paul was telling. I believe he was telling the, the, the Colossians. He said to them, He said, I don't want you to worry yourself too much about the do's and the don'ts of this current age. He said, Because he's passing away anyway. But guess what? The people in there, those souls are precious to God. And Jesus was praying. He wasn't asking the Father to save the world system from collapsing. He says, no, I do not pray for the world. He said, but I pray for these ones that you have given to me, that none of them shall be lost except for the son of perdition. 
That was Judas Iscariot. He didn't mention his name, but he mentioned the category that he belonged to. And so, we're not mentioning their name, but we're mentioning and describing the order that they belong to. Jesus said, this guy is of the order of perdition. But these two people, they are of the order of annoyance. They just want to create chaos for no reason. Judas could not stop what God was doing in the life of Jesus. These people cannot stop what God is doing in his church. But we still do not want their annoyances. And the Lord's given us an opportunity to pray against it. And the prayer that we have just said, the go, the go quickly, and the go now, are elaborations of the prayer that Jesus said concerning Judas Iscariot. Jesus looked at Judas and he said to Judas, what you must do, do quickly. So these people, they must go because the word of the Lord has come forth. We are now declaring because the Lord says we should say something. Jesus did not assume that Judas was going to go quickly. He didn't assume that the father was going to kick him into action. He knew that if he did not say it, it was not going to happen. Because that is the reason why we are witnesses. God says it, we believe it, and then we repeat what he says. And then miracles begin to happen. All of Jesus' ministry, he says, what I say is what I hear my father say. The moment I hear my father say it, it's not enough for me to just keep quiet. No, I have to let it sink into my spirit, meditate on it, and then let it come out from the lowest part of me, from my subconscious mind as a river of living water. And that is what makes miracles happen on the earth. So what we're doing right now is the same. We're doing what we're saying, go quickly. We do not want to put up with their shenanigans. Let them go very quickly. Don't worry, you will see it. Because the angel says we're in the now season, right? The ones who have held regions and resources captive and held people captive, the Lord is saying that they're going and they've already started going. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, let us go back to the issue of faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord says, what I have for you now is an update. As I was speaking, the Lord was touching hearts in this place. The things that you have struggled to believe, this thing, the things that you have struggled to envision have now become things of the past because right now your heart will grasp the word of God and you will be able to hold on to it even in the face of trials, in the face of disappointments, you will be able to believe. If that's all you came here to receive today, I believe it is worth your while. If I were you, I would thank God for it. I would say, Father, thank you for faith. Thank you for the measure of faith. Thank you for igniting faith. Thank you, Lord, for helping my unbelief. Praise the Lord. I saw us earlier saying a prayer of thanksgiving. I didn't know what it was, but now here it is. Thanking God because he helps our unbelief. And now that the issue of unbelief is taken care of, we are going to prophesy some more. But I'm going to have to remind you of two things, first of all. Okay? What is the name of the first angel that came, that was revealed to me? His name is Kosai, which means no room. Literally, his name means no room. But when he introduced himself to me, he said, my name is Kosai, and my name means abundance. I did not argue with him. I did not question him any further. I didn't know what Kosai meant. He said it, and I just received it, and I announced it to y'all. And the Lord said to me specifically, he said, I don't want you Googling that name. So I waited a couple of days. After a while, I was too eager. So I Googled it. And I didn't really see anything meaningful. There's the closest thing to it is a, is a Japanese term that means a messenger. I said, okay, I'll take that because angels are messengers, right? And when I was done, the Lord was like, are you done? I said, yes, I'm done. I got it out of my system. Thank you. He now said to me, go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. When I read Malachi 3, 10, I, of course, I could read it by heart, you know, since I was little, because our pastor always two times, twice a week, every, every Wednesday and every Sunday. Malachi 3, 10. Therefore, now bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they might be meeting in my house and try me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you such a blessing that you will not have room enough to contain. 
I can read it by heart, but the Holy Spirit said to me, He said, I didn't mean for you to impress me. I know you know it, but I want you to go and read it. So when I opened my Bible and I saw, He said to me, He said, read it in Hebrew. So when I read it in Hebrew, I noticed that a couple of words were missing. So I went in the English, and in the English, those words were italicized. They were not part of what God said. People put it in there. When you find things that are italicized in your Bible, particularly the King James and the New King James Bible, they were inserted for clarity. Many of us don't even read the introduction that is in the publication that you call the Bible that is in your hand. When you read the preface and you read the introduction, what you will find is there are certain exclusions that are there for you to know what you're reading. So again, if you haven't heard this before, every italicized word in your Bible, in your English Bible, was not part of the original Greek or Hebrew text. They were introduced. So when you read the part of it that says, I will pour you such blessing that you will not have room enough to contain all that enough to contain is not there. The original Hebrew just says, no room. Kosai. Let me tell you something. We have come to a season wherein God is really demonstrating his love toward us. Giving us first-hand revelation of what he is doing for his church. When I saw that, it humbled me because the one Hello? Uh, can somebody just quickly grab Christian or Joshua? I don't think anyone is manning this board, but he's acting up. Please, if you can. I need another microphone. So praise the Lord. When the Lord showed to me what he was going to do, I didn't just wait until Tuesday. I could have. But by Monday or Sunday night or Monday night, I said to the Lord, I said, well, I'm really expectant for Tuesday for what will happen. I said, but Lord, can you give me an insight? Can I just meet one of these friends of ours that are coming? And immediately I saw Kosai and I asked what his name was. The rest is history. And then after that, I saw Andel. And do you know that Andel in Slovakia or in, in, in um, Czech and Slovakia, in their native tongue from ancient past, they had an encounter of the supernatural and they adopted the name Andel. And it means angel in their language. I didn't know until after the Lord had shown me that revelation. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do some research. That one I was not forbidden from looking up. I looked up and I saw it. I'm telling you all of these things because I want it to be very clear to you. All of the effort that heaven is making to ensure that you and I are as equipped as we need to be. Do you think I need a different microphone? Because sometimes it's loud, sometimes it isn't. It is the speakers that are doing that. Okay, very good. So y'all can hear me. Praise the Lord. And so, to whom much is given, much is expected. So let me recap all of the things, a couple of the things that I've said up until this point. Thing number one, God recognizes that we need our faith to be stirred up because part of what he wants us to do and the reason why he's equipping us with insight and revelation is so that we can once again recognize the ministry of angels use the ministry of angels and then play our part which is to declare the mind and the will of God to prophesy and you are supposed to prophesy not just because the person next to you is doing it but because you have the faith for it okay now we have already started prophesying by declaring for those who are remaining in the place where the wind of the Lord is pushing them out of to go and to go quickly Right? God gave us that interlude so that we can exercise what he had just given to us. Does it make sense? And so when the outcome of these things come, when we see the outcome in a few weeks, you know what that's going to do to your faith? Your faith is going to what? Skyrocket. God has given you a measure of faith because that word measure is the same term that is being used to describe leaven or yeast when it is put into bakery. So when you put a measure of yeast into bread, and you bake it, what is it supposed to do? It's supposed to leaven the whole lump. It's supposed to rise. And so when the Bible says God gives you a measure of faith, he's not expecting you to keep running around with just that measure of faith. God wants it to rise. You see what I mean? And so when these things begin to happen, your faith will rise and you will prophesy some more. But I will tell you one thing 
very quickly. I started it, but I didn't finish it. So let me continue about these angels that have come. And so I probed even further. I said, Lord, what is the order of our assignment? I've seen the equipment. You have given us your angel to reassure us that we have your abundance, everything that we need. And then Andel came and it was a human paintbrush that dove onto the canvas and began to paint. And the Lord said to me, go to Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. And this is what the Lord showed to me in Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. So you will begin to see very clearly the assignment that the Lord has given to his angels and how he wants you and I to, op to operate in agreement with them so that we are lockstep. Again, remember, these angels are given for what? They are given for battle. Colossians chapter 2. By the time we read it, you will realize why this scripture has been coming up again and again in the last two to three weeks here at Communion House. And for me, when I'm counseling and praying for people, the Lord's been bringing this scripture to me again and again. And what does it say? The Bible says, having wiped out for those people who were not here on Tuesday and who may not have heard the message. The second order of angels that was revealed to me amongst the lineup of the seven was the one that was called Andel. Right? These are names, these are not names that I read in a book or that I heard from somebody. They came from interaction. So I have, you know, I've always encouraged you ask questions. The Bible says he knows who quests to know. A lot of what you read in your Bible was because men asked questions. Because if they didn't ask questions, do you know that the angel of the Lord who came and read the scroll to Daniel of things that would happen from that time up until the beginning of Jesus' reign for the millennial reign, do you know that that angel was about to fold up his scroll and go back to heaven? We would not have had a clue of, of anything he said. He described the beast that he saw the beast with multiple heads with, with thorns coming out of the heads and Daniel was looking at him just like you are looking at me like okay a beast indeed wow imagine before Hollywood before the movies if someone is describing all of those things to you at best you be confused or petrified you know their imagination was not like ours now we can substantiate things right let me explain to you what I mean <clears throat> How many people remember this movie, The Seven Voyages of Sinbad? Wow. Only the Methuselahs amongst us. Come on, guys. Where are the millennials? Okay, let's find another movie. How many people remember Man with the Golden Gun, James Bond? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, Chris. You found that in a museum somewhere because that was way before your time. But let me tell you, if you go back to those movies that you watched 30 years ago and you watch them now, you will not believe your eyes. You will see strings pulling dragons. You will see people lighting fire in the mouth, in the mouth of the dragon. But when you watched it 30 years ago, it looked so real. You couldn't sleep. You had nightmares for three days. Because it looks so real to you. And, but that's because we had not been exposed to the real thing. You see what I mean? And so that was why the little painting and the little drawing and the strings and all of the theatrics, that was the reason why it got to us. If I go and walk snake in the monkey shadow. Do you remember that one? Old Kung Fu film, movie? What movies did y'all watch when you were growing up? Nobody watched. Okay, what about, oh my goodness. Oh, let's find another one. Um, yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Clint Eastwood, right? Now, when you watch those movies now, when you watch them initially, you were like, man, these people are terrible. They're so good. Look at those punches. When you watch those movies now, you will see those punches like six inches away from their faces. But the level of production at the time, you fell for it because you hadn't seen better. But with what you have seen now, especially since Jurassic Park, you can no longer go back and watch movies from 1976. They're like so amateur and so nonsensical, right? Why is that? Because of what you have seen now. Daniel and the rest of them had not seen what we see now. And that is the reason why a lot of what was said to them 
did not make any sense. They could not even conceptualize it. They would not even have been able to fully write it down if they hadn't asked questions. So Daniel was like, well done, mister. I appreciate all of what you have shown to me in the name of the Father. But what do these things mean? That was when the angel was like, oh, okay. I can break it down to you. And then he broke it down to him. And that's why we know now that those beasts represent kingdoms. And the crowns or the heads represent kings. And the sea represents the multitude of people. All the revelation that we had was because people ask questions. So I'm encouraging you when God shows a thing to you, don't just get so excited, clap your hands and, and wake up or, or, or go tell your neighbor. No, ask questions. What does that mean? So I asked, what is, what's your name? What does it mean? What is this about? And they would tell me. Because that's what the word of God says. When you ask, you receive. All right? And so, going back to Andel, for those who were not here, I was standing here when I described to you that when I saw Andel and he told me that his name means miracle. He said, because I am the Lord's paintbrush by me, he changes stories. Remember that on Tuesday, I told us that by miracles, God changes people's stories. The one that was born without the womb by a miracle will be a mother of children. By miracles, a man that was born blind will now be able to see simply because God can paint eyes over that face with an empty socket. And while I was yet speaking on the day I described to you that just like a man diving into a pool and Dale dove onto a canvas and he drew a door where there was no way. And he said to me, by my ministry, the Lord makes a way where there is no way. Now here is the deal. When I asked more about the order of their assignment and ours, what steps do we need to take? The Lord brought me to Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. And what does it say? It says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The Bible says that God is wiping out the handwriting of the requirements that are against us. Why would he send us the angel of abundance? Because he wants us to know that we are about to leave Egypt to head in the direction of the promised land. Because when they were leaving Egypt, what did the Lord say to them? He said to Moses, tell the women, ask the Egyptians for gold and silver. So when they were leaving, they left with an abundance of resources to do the will of their father. God said to them, he says, I am going to load you up with treasures because you are going to minister unto me. The Lord is going to equip every one of us for the assignment that he has ahead of us. Are you following my drift? The Lord God is removing the ones who have been in power so that you and I can be elevated. So we need to start to renew our minds from the slavery mentality, the mentality of they, oh, they, they, they need to build a bridge, they need to make new schools, they need to make new roads. We are about to become the ones that he has chosen. Last week, my wife pleaded with me. She said, I think you need to tell people where the millennial reign is in the Bible. You know, I'm always talking about the millennial reign. I'm always talking about the fact that the will of God for us as believers, when Jesus comes, it's not so that he can take us and then we'll go to heaven forever. You will not find that in your Bible. These things were told to us, but I don't know who. The Bible says when he comes, we will behold him in the blue skies and we will be caught up to meet with him and in an instant we will be changed, putting away immortality. We will take on mortality and where he is, there we will be also. And Jesus told his disciples where he was going to be. He says when I return, he says where the bodies are, there the eagles shall gather. And here we have the bodies. He is coming to set foot upon the earth, particularly upon the Mount of Olives, to introduce his government upon the earth and establish his utopia. We are not going to heaven unless God is, God is suffering from schizophrenia. Because the same God who told us that we will inherit the earth will not tell us that we're going to be in heaven singing forever. Of what use is that? And it's not even in your Bible. I challenge, I've challenged people again and again. You will not find it in any scripture that we're going to live in heaven forever. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, he says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. God spoke in, in, in Psalms 82. He says, I'm going to get rid of these ones that I've appointed to look after the poor, the needy, the fatherless, and the afflicted. He said, I appointed my children to look after them. He says, but they paraded themselves like gods, oppressed the people, and now they will die like men. He says, and I will come and inherit the earth. How is God, the God of heaven, going to inherit the earth? He already told us. He says we are co-heirs with Christ Jesus. And we will inherit in his name. And so here is where we're going to make it happen. So before we go on, let's just quickly look at one scripture. One scripture only because of time. And that is Revelation chapter 20. The millennial reign is all over the Bible. A lot of the parables that Jesus told, he told us parables of how we're going to be transformed, how we're going to be changed and equipped to live for a thousand years to see the kingdom come. As the kingdom come, do we not owe God a thousand years? We owe a debt that we have to pay. He made everything in six days. On the seventh day, he rested, hoping that men will be able to carry on. And men fell right on that day. And then the world went into shambles. And God is like, what? I gave you dominion. I gave you the equipping, everything to make this world run the way that heaven runs. So you see to it. That was why Jesus came to restore us to the place that we were, we were kicked out of. So that one day, that 1,000 years, because the Bible says a day is like a 1,000 years before the Lord and a 1,000 years is like a day, is still there for us to see the will of God done on the earth, for animals to be restored to their ranks, for minerals that are in the earth to be used for the purpose that God intended, for farms to be cultivated, to produce the way God intended. And we have that 1,000 years. Look at Revelation chapter 20. I can give you like 45 references. But we'll do one today. What does it say? In verse, in verse 4. Revelation 24. In my Bible it's titled. The saints reign with Christ. A thousand years. Anybody has such a title in their Bibles? And where are they going to reign? Let's read it. Verse 4 says. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads and on their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years guys the devil made up that lie because he wants to inherit the earth. Satan knows that there's no way he's going to get back to heaven. Because when, when Gabriel kicked them out, what did he say? He, the Bible says they were driven out of heaven and their place was no more. Now, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth because that old dragon and deceiver, Lucifer, is falling to the earth. That's what the Bible says. And so this is the only place he has to go to because from here, guess where? He has next to go, hell. So he wants to fight with the very last breath to hold on to this earth. That was why he lied to us that this earth does not belong to us. That when we die, we will go to heaven. When Jesus comes, we will go. He wants to get rid of us. He wants us to buy into it, to believe it and to confess it. But thank God that we're no longer ignorant of the devices of the crafty in that regard. This place, we will fix this place up. It's a fixer wrapper. For a thousand years, and then when the thousand years is done, the Bible says that together, because we are the friends of the bridegroom, we will go with the Lord Jesus to receive his bride, which is the new heavenly Jerusalem, whose maker and builder is God. And the Bible says that when we come with the Lord Almighty, the person of the Lord Jesus Christ into that new city, we will be the pillars of that city, priests and kings ministering unto our God. That is the future of the saints. But that 1,000 years that is coming, we need to make the most of it. And it starts now. We need to start preparing for it now. We need to elevate our mind from these beggarly elements of the world that if some government doesn't do it, it doesn't get done. If some scientist doesn't do it, it doesn't get done. If Elon doesn't make it and Joe doesn't say it, we're doomed. Let me tell you something. The power has been given to you and I to see the earth restored to the original intention in the heart of the maker. Let's stop playing games with God. 
Let's stop shirking our responsibility. Let us wake up and stand like men. What is the word of God to us that we just read? He said to us, go in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 19. He says, go and stand at the gate. The Lord is declaring over us here at Communion House. 2023 is the year of going forth, going forth to stand. Praise the Lord. So I think I'm going to stop on my point number two today. And then let's just read it again. And then we'll continue from there, God willing, on Tuesday. Point number two is Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. That says that the reason why the Lord is giving us his angel that can blot out and paint over and erase the ordinances against us is because God does not want anything to hold us back from fulfilling his will. So let me tell you something. Everything that has ever been said to keep you back is now being erased by the angel of the Lord. But you know what is interesting? The part of it that I find the most fun is that that angel, his name means miracle. The way it's going to happen will be nothing short of a miracle. Anybody ready for miracles? Anybody ready for a season of miracles? I want to prophesy over every parent that is in the room. Every child that is holding you back from doing the full will of God that is in your heart because of the trauma, because of the challenges that they have, the Lord is fixing them by a miracle so that you can go forth and stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Every debt that is keeping you from believing in the supernatural and believing in your assignment, the Lord is canceling every one of those debts so that you can go forth and stand. Whatever it is that is keeping you from believing that you can bring forth a child, from believing that God can do what he says, the Lord says, and they'll, he's gone ahead of you and they will blot it out in the mighty name of Jesus. The angel of the Lord said to me on the 3rd of September, he says, so now that you are free, what are you going to do? This is exactly what we are going to do. We will believe in the God of abundance and we will step forward to take a stand knowing that there is no allegation that is against us that will stand. Knowing that there is no limitation that has been set for us that will remain. If they say to you that you cannot get that business off the ground because you need this and you need that, you neutralize every one of those requirements and you say, the angel of the Lord is all overriding every one of those requirements. Brother Matthew, did they not say to you that you couldn't go out because of COVID? That you couldn't get on the plane to go to the end of the earth? But what happened was the word of the Lord came to you. He's going to share more about that on Tuesday by the grace of God. How the word of the Lord became a miracle in his life that took him out of this country in the midst of the pandemic to go and do the work of the ministry with signs and wonders following. Simply because the Lord made a way where there was no way. I'm going to stop right here so that we can close. But here is the deal, y'all. The Lord just reminded me. The Lord says that we need to take it very seriously what he has shown to us. Every one of us, we should say that not on my watch will they remain in office, the ones that the Lord is removing. Let me say this very quickly. Folks, when the angel of the Lord was bringing the answer to Daniel's prayer, for 21 days, that angel of the Lord was withstood by the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia was not Lucifer. The prince of Persia was the principality over that area. That's why he was called a prince. Okay? He was the principality over that area. And you know that those principalities come to power by God's appointment. Because the Bible says that every power that comes is in subjection to Christ so that he may have preeminence over all things for he is the head of principalities and powers. And so the prince of Persia was able to withstand the prayer of Daniel because he was in his jurisdiction. And he's like, I don't like what I'm seeing here. You, what you're bringing from heaven, the moment it reaches, God bless you, Cody, the moment that reaches the end of Daniel, Daniel will change the face of my territory. And I don't want that. So the prince of Persia refused to allow Daniel's answer to be delivered. 
But guess what? He thought Daniel had gone to sleep, but Daniel stayed by his window day and night. He continued to pray. And through his prayer and fasting, he was able to summon reinforcement. And guess what? The biggest boy of them all, Michael, had to answer that prayer. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord, Michael, came. And by the time he showed up, the prince of Persia was like, oh, okay, you may go. But guess what Daniel was saying? Not on my watch. Did you see what I did, what I did there? Because he was watching and praying. So not on his watch will he be denied the power to change the face of his territory. Let me tell you something. You may be small in your eyes, but in the eyes of God, You know, they said, oh, we cannot take Jericho because we're like grasshopper in, this eye, in their eyes. But Jake, Joshua and Caleb, they were like, we don't know what y'all are talking about. If you don't have anything better to say, shush, we are able to possess the land. Let me tell you something. I may not have written half a policy for the government all my life, but one thing that I do know is that I can stop a war that is not needed from happening simply because I have the authority of heaven. I do not want to allow any inconvenience that heaven says is avoidable. So the Lord brought my attention to that again. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do something very special. As we break bread today, we will go to a verse of scripture in the book of Genesis. And what I want us to do, come to Genesis chapter 13. And after this, you may want to grab this Bible from me before I read four more, four more scriptures. Look at Genesis chapter 13. We're going to read verse 3 and we're going to jump to verse 12. Look at what it says in verse 3. It says, And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai. Ai. Right? And you know I've been telling you that I represents the spirit of this age. And that is the reason why they throw the word AI, artificial intelligence, around. Because they know what they're doing. They're trying to evoke the spirit of I. It's an ancient spirit. And we know what it does to the people of God. He comes into the marketplace and turns material things to God so that people would worship items rather than worship God. And so now this man was between Bethel and Hai. Now let's go to verse 12. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. <laughs> his tent was where? As far as Sodom. Now, what is the name or the spiritual name of the kingdom of this world in this generation? It's called the Mystery Babylon and it's also called Sodom and it's also called Egypt. It's called Babylon in terms of its composition. It's called Egypt in terms of its regimentation. And it's called Sodom in terms of what is immorality. So this world system is immoral. They promote every wrong thing and try to shut down the truth. But guess what? Lot pitched his tent as far as Sodom. And under his nose, immorality continued to thrive. A man who had experienced victory over high. A man who had been in Bethel, the house of God. He should know better than to allow immorality under his nose. So we are going to say we will not be like that dude. Not on our watch will immorality spread any further. We have seen it. Prophecy is fulfilled. We don't have to continue to tolerate the annoyances. We are saying no. What are we doing? We are saying no to Sodom. We are saying no to immorality. And what we're going to do is we're going to renew in our consciousness the authority that God has given to us. Jesus says, as often as you have the opportunity, do this in remembrance of me. You may be saying, but I've never forgotten Jesus. Oh yeah, but there are spirits and principalities who pretend like they have forgotten that you now have power. So you say stuff and they look the other way. No, they need to be reminded that it was for you that he died and that it was to you that he committed the ordinances of God. So that when you say this is what we're doing in Sodom, that is exactly what they're going to do to avoid the judgment of God from coming to your tent. People will still face the music 
but I don't want the nonsense at my doorstep. That's what the Lord is saying. And so today we're going to put the blood on our doorsteps and say the madness stops here. Because once the blood is on your doorstep, you're saying, okay, I'm not allowing any one of those things here. Even the angel of death will pass. Anybody ready to secure their gate against what is coming? Do it for your household. Do it that the name of the Lord might be glorified through your testimonies. So let us open our Bibles. I mean, let's open our, our um, communion cups and get out the bread. I intentionally skipped verse 4, so I'm just going to read it. The Bible says he came from between Bethel and I to the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. He came to that altar. That altar for us is called Calvary, where the Lamb of God was slain. As we do this in remembrance, this is going to allow us to be more like Abraham and less like Lot. Because these were the things that Abraham did and he did not pitch his tent against Sodom. There are certain things that we need to do to put a boundary between us and Egypt. We are of Goshen. And we need to remain in that place of consecration to the Lord. And so Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. Father, I thank you because by your Holy Spirit, we will understand and digest these things that you are saying so expressly by your Holy Spirit tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we receive the bread as the body of Jesus. We receive the wine as his blood. As we eat that body today, we remember that it was broken for us so that we may be made whole. As we drink the blood today, we receive it as the life of the Lamb of God who loved us and gave himself for us so that we no longer have to live the mundane. We can now live the glorified life of the Son of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you may eat of his flesh and drink of his blood. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Alrighty, let's be seated very quickly. I made a promise that we're going to be out of here by 9 o'clock today and I want to make it good. Oh yes. So, some of that may have sounded a little rushed, but the good thing is, by tomorrow, this time, actually I think 6 p.m. tomorrow, it will already be on YouTube and on Facebook. So you can watch it again, you can slow it down, because sometimes I speak rather fast, because there's a lot to say but you can slow it down and listen to it again but don't forget that I said I had three things for us I have brought to us two things the third thing is in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 so ahead of Tuesday if you want to meditate on Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and do something can you look up here for a moment when you're studying in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and you're meditating on it I want you to do what the Lord asked me to do by his Holy Spirit he said to me, again, I know you can recite it. He said, but I want you to go and look at it. And as I was looking at it, a word jumped out to me with a meaning that I had never seen before. So ask before you go meditating on it. I said, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, speak to me from Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. So that when we come around on Tuesday, what you are saying through your prophet will come to establish what you have already said to me. You know, the Bible says, believe the Lord and you will prosper and you will be established. You will prosper. Believe his prophets and you shall be established. So you need to hear it from the Lord and you need to hear it from his prophets. So I'm encouraging you hear it first from the Lord. Meditate on that Joshua 1 8. If you know anybody that isn't here, maybe John, you can put it in the group. Tell them to meditate on it because what the Lord has for us as insight into our next move as the body of Christ is golden. I have caught a glimpse of it and I can tell you I am excited. I am excited to be in the kingdom at such a time as this. God is changing everything and he is doing it through your obedience and mine. So be excited, be fired up and I'll see you all on Tuesday. In the meantime, the offering instructions will come on the screen. On the screen. Let us just package our offerings. Again, our communion house, our posture is not to meet needs. God meets our needs will give primarily as a form of worship. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of your increase. If the Lord is saying, bring in all the tithes so that you can experience the miracle and the ministry of Kosai, wherein there will be no room to contain, not enough room because of the abundance. Then why don't you do what he said? Try me and see. Don't let your hand be short toward God. 
because he's asking you to give as a test of the heart not because he needs your resources he owns everything a cattle upon a thousand hills so be encouraged to give today as a sign of worship let your heart be postured praise the Lord you know me I always recommend can we get Joshua to change the screen please because not everybody knows the instructions but most of us already do praise God God is good alrighty and so the offering basket as soon as you're done Manuel Lida if you can help us bring the offering basket here this is just going to be left here for like five minutes because I want us to be out of here by nine o'clock so for five minutes it's going to be here right after service if you have an offering envelope or you have a check or cash you can just put that in here and for the rest of us I believe we've done our giving on our phones so let us just bless this moment of worship Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have had once again to learn at your feet, to be brought up to date with what you're doing in your house, through your house, in your kingdom, and through your kingdom here on the earth. Lord, may us, may we not be like those who look themselves, who, who look at their faces in the mirror and then go away and within moments forget what they have seen. Let us be of the company of those that continue to meditate upon your word, that continue to prophesy and profess your word until we see Christ formed in us the hope of glory. And for the offerings that have been brought today, let them come to you as a sweet-smelling savor, O oh God, because you love a cheerful giver. And Lord, for this house that is receiving the offerings, we receive them as a blessing, we we'll receive them in appreciation and we thank you because together we will continue to see this work grow and multiply in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is good. Alrighty. So the announcement that I made earlier about Tuesday comes with an assignment and I want to encourage you to do it. You'll be amazed at what you will get out of it. But I know that somebody can use prayers today so as much as we're closing the service if you want to come forth for prayers I'll stand here for maybe a couple of minutes and I would love to pray with you and pray for you now I'm going to remind you of a prophecy because there is an update that comes with that prophecy the vision that I saw of those who are trying to incite war and what they're blowing up right next to those tanks that are blowing up I see a construction equipment okay and this is what I know that the ones who are instigating the war are looking for an excuse to move in to take over and build their own kingdom but the Lord is going to frustrate every single one of their efforts because it is the time for Christ to build his church not time for anybody to continue to take advantage of others so let that be also at the back of your mind as you rebuke the devil these next couple of days. Just know that what they're trying to do is they're trying to create more obstruction in the way of the Lord Jesus establishing his kingdom. And I have a part in that kingdom. I have one of those thrones because I'm a king and a priest unto my God. And so that is the reason why I am taking the personal. I'm sorry, but I'm not letting anybody create a disturbance or an annoyance when the Lord says it is time for us to reign and minister to our God. One last thing that I'm going to do before I come down to pray for folks is this. I told you a couple of days ago that some family members who have been having trouble in their dreams, that have been troubled by familiar spirits, that you will pray for them and those things will stop. Anybody had an, a testimony just yet? Okay, you have a testimony? Praise God. Please remind me to share it on Tuesday to encourage the faith of other people. If you have yet to see such victory, don't stop rebuking the devil. What the Lord is showing to me is this. Some of those familiar spirits, their network looks like pipelines. And what happened was the moment you prayed for that person. In fact, if you laid hands on a family member about those dreams, can I see your hand? If you laid hands on a family member who's been suffering in the area of dreams. Okay, thank you, Brother Matthew. Now, what I saw concerning some people is they laid hands, they prayed for, and as soon as the power of God came from you, 
to drive out the familiar spirits, they turned off one of those pipes so that the power that was coming from you would not get to them. And as soon as you stop praying, they release the pipe and they are trying to refill that person's life, life with trauma, with demonic oppression. The Lord is saying, you would only have result if you do not faint. Do not stop praying for them. Maybe it's your spouse, even maybe yourself. Don't stop praying against the action of familiar spirits. They are blood suckers. They want to stop you from enjoying fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you, no matter what they do, let them find you praying. No matter what they do, let them find you standing in authority. Remember, we're coming into a new, a new year and the instruction of the Lord is go and stand. So we're going forth, but we're not getting ahead of God. We will go forth and stand at the gate until the next instruction comes. So as far as dreams and demonic oppression is concerned, guess what? Even the voices that tell people to take their own lives, they will step back when you step forward, but then as soon as you leave, they will come back. You need to stand there until God gives you that next instruction. Don't give up. Don't leave your place. And that victory is inevitable in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us rise up. In the two minutes that we have left, I want you to profess Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. This week I will ask to know more of what's in the mind of God for me and my family for the church of God and I will receive insight I will seek to know of the mysteries and I will find I will find them unraveled to me also I will knock and doors will open to me that lead to more treasures of godliness of goodness, of righteousness, of peace, and ultimately, of joy. This week, these three areas of human endeavor, the area of asking to receive, the area of seeking to find, and the area of knocking to access, will work for me very greatly. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Praise the Lord.